Hello everyone, I am Megha Chakraborty. Welcome to my presentation of our ongoing work titled AI Generated Text Detection is Not As Easy As You May Think. Let us first look at this example of an OPT generated text given the text input Elon Musk got married to Kamala Harris. We can see in this example that the model was able to create a short paragraph describing an event that never took place. The images you see are created by Stable Diffusion 2.0. Now let us see how GPT-0, one of the AI detection techniques, works on this particular example. As you can see, GPT-0 calculates the per sentence perplexity score and the final verdict that it, it gives out is that it is human generated. Now that does not sound right, does it? Now that we have established the problem, let us look at some of the solutions out there. Watermarking was a technique introduced by researchers at University of Maryland, which involves encoding some particular tokens as watermarks in order for us to be able to detect whether a language model produces those watermarked tokens so that we can detect whether a piece of text was generated by that particular language model. Next, Chris Manning and group came up with Detect, Detect GPT, which works on comparing the log likelihood of some of the generated tokens and perturbing them with some other uh, input tokens. Finally, GPT-0 works on perplexity estimation with the hypothesis that a lower perplexity measure and a lower burstiness score implies that there is a high probability of the text being generated by an AI model. In our work, we show how each of these three techniques are vulnerable. Watermarked tokens can be de-watermarked, and the models that work on negative log likelihood and perplexity estimation come with the challenges that you need to know exactly which LLM was used to generate the text and you need access to the log probabilities of the text being generated. Our experimental setup is as follows. First, we generate data. Then we perform experiments on dewatermarking, negative log likelihood computation and perplexity estimation. In order to generate the data, first we collected around 400k tweets from New York Times and then used the LLMs OPT, Bloom, ExcelNet and GPT-2 to generate the AI texts. For our dewatermarking experimentation, we worked on three different types of experiments. First is spotting the high entropy words and replacing them, then paraphrasing and finally bringing a human in the loop. The watermarking technique that was proposed claims that it can generate watermark and detect the watermark text based on the LLMs um, that are given here. However, when we tried experimenting with the given uh, technique, we have found that after producing the text with the watermark, if we merge multiple paragraphs as a single paragraph, the detector fails to recognize it as a watermark text. So what are these watermark tokens and why are we masking and replacing them? The paper proposes that the high entropy words are usually the watermarked tokens. So we used four masking LLMs and we tested each model to detect which are the high entropy words and we iterated masking each word over the, over the entire watermarked paragraph. The high entropy words were determined based on the likelihood of the masked work occurring. We decided to keep the threshold at 40%. So if the probability was less than 40%, we identified that word as having a high entropy. After identifying all words with high entropy, we replaced them with a word um, from the same or another language model. So basically we created a four cross four matrix for each of these four uh, masking models and created a 16 combination technique to see which um, LLMs are able to detect the watermarks of the other LLMs. After having spotted and replaced the high entropy words, aka the watermarked tokens, we ran the newly wa uh, dewatermarked paragraph through the detector to see if it could detect the presence of a watermark. Now, 
not all of the 16 combinations worked. However, we saw that at least one combination for each case was able to successfully dewatermark the text. And hence, we claim a success rate of 100% in case of dewatermarking the text. Keeping in mind the goal of removing the watermark tokens, we are now experimenting with two other ways of removing the watermarks. The first is paraphrasing, in which we feed the AI-generated text to a paraphraser model and then evaluate for watermarking in the paraphrase text. And the next one is human in the loop, where we have already identified the high entropy words and we ask a human annotator to replace those words with a word by uh, with a word of their choice. Uh, experiments on these are ongoing, but we hope to see good results and we hope to see the dewatermarking process being successful. For our next set of, set of experiments, let us first understand how Detect GPT works. So um, it only for, first of all, it only works for GPT-3 and that too, it doesn't work really well. Uh, so first it creates some minor perturbations in the generated text and then it compares the log probability uh, of the original text with the perturbed sample. If the log ratio is high, then the sample is likely to be generated from the source model, in this case GPT. Let us also simultaneously look at the perplexity estimation. GPT-0 is um, a technique that works on perplexity measure and burstiness measure, which um, respectively analyze the randomness of the text and the uniformity in the randomness of the text. So a lower perplexity score implies that it is likely generated by AI because that means that it is easy to predict the next word. While perplexity works on next word prediction, burstiness evaluates the homogeneity of the sentence length and the variability in the sentences. So we can say that perplexity is to words as uh, burstiness is to sentences. Now, even though it uh, technically sounds to be foolproof, why are these techniques not good enough? As I mentioned before, first of all, you need to know which log, uh, which language model was used. And you need access to the log probabilities because all of these techniques require are based on the log probabilities of the words. But what if you were able to overcome these two challenges and you were able to get access to the log probabilities? Do you think it is still foolproof? Our results conclusively show that they are not foolproof. Here you can see the results of our experiments where we tried out on models GPT-2, OPT, Bloom, ExcelNet and we found the statistical measures for per perplexity of the AI text and the human text. As you can see here, there is absolutely no statistical significant difference between them. So, why are these techniques fallible? First of all, because they are not LLM agnostic, all of these techniques, all of these models are very typical to the language model that they are trained on. And secondly, there is always a way around to um, bypass the detection techniques. In addition to that conclusion, our experiments also led us to the observation that some language models are very easy to detect while some others are not. So we also propose ADI, which is AI Detectability Index. Here, we hope to index all of the language models that are out there in, in accordance to how easily or how difficult it is to detect whether a piece of text that is generated by the model is detectable or not. In conclusion, in our body of work, we have proven that the current AI-generated text detection techniques are all conquerable. We also propose ADI as a benchmark for to the community for indexing LMs according to their according to the ease or difficulty of their detection techniques. We are also planning a workshop called Counter Turing Test for the community to come up with their own techniques for detecting AI-generated text. Thank you for your attention. Have a nice day.